Okay, so let's get started. We're going to look first at the freehand mode in Strokit. And one thing to notice about the freehand mode is that it can create a pretty big variety of different types of strokes. Um, the main difference being you can have kind of flat ones like this that look quite smooth and sort of sit down low on the canvas. Or you can have something that looks a bit more like this where the strokes are quite blobby, quite heavy, and obviously you have a lot of kind of depth and height to them um, and sort of sit up quite pronounced off the canvas. So I'm going to show you how to do both of them. They use the same tool set. There's no difference there. It's just that um, some settings are quite different and obviously because the blob one uses a lot more displacement, it can be a little more intensive on the system. But I'll start with the main flat stroke setup. So I'm just going to switch back to that for now. And there we go, that updates. Okay, so I'll take you through the main sort of setup using this system, and then um, we'll go through some settings. Right, so let's jump back to my main geometry scene here. So when you open Stroke It, you'll probably see something a lot like this. We're just focused on this freehand section right now. I've disabled the auto trace section just because otherwise it would mean as soon as you open the tool, it would have to cook all of that and that takes time. So jumping inside this freehand uh, V2 node here, and we'll see we have the kind of main Stroke It freehand set up. And that consists of mainly this draw curve here is where you actually draw the original paths that become the strokes. Um, then through some other processing, it's these nodes here, um, WM stroke it one and, and the other one here, this one here, this is where kind of all the stuff's going on. And, and basically what I've just done is set two, sent two of them out to render. Um, and then I was using that switch a minute ago, I was just switching between these two here, just so I could quickly show you the difference there. Uh, so we're going to make our changes right now just in this one here. And um, so notice as soon as I select this node here, that a lot of new settings appear up here, particularly if I go to this brush mode. Um, and these are all custom settings which I've made for Stroke It, um, which give you kind of logical controls over what these strokes look like. Then up here, as I said before, is this draw curve node. And that is where you, you lay your paths down. So what I'm going to do here is have this selected and um, go up to this part of the parameters here. And you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, there are these three different tabs here, and that's important to notice those um, are different. Once you've laid down some strokes, you want to be in this uh, stroke mode. But when you draw them, you want to be in this curve mode here. So I'm going to just select stroke now. And where it says number of strokes five, I'm just going to take that down to zero. Now we haven't got any. And basically what I'm doing here, by the way, is I'm previewing both my SOPS uh, top view here and also Karma rendering down here. So I can see my strokes appearing pretty close to real time. So now I switch back to curve here and um, you notice I've got a color selected here. I'll just keep that. And I'm just gonna draw over the viewport now. Just pop them down here. You see pretty quickly it appears down here in my camera viewport. Each time I draw a new one, I can just try uh, shifting the color a little bit. I see we got a new stroke there. A couple things to notice as I'm doing this is that the tool is actually pressure sensitive. So if you're using a Wacom tablet or another tablet that has uh, pressure sensitivity, the draw curve node will pick that up and pipe that through into the stroke it's set up. So if I push down really hard to start with and then go kind of easy after that, you can see that pressure is being reflected in the stroke and also what's appearing down here at the bottom. And let's see if I could come a few more. Actually, no, didn't want to keep the color. So now if I just go back to the list of strokes, if I go take that from four down to three, it'll delete that last one. And of course you can edit individual strokes and change the color afterwards. Um, I'm going to do a new one here. Let's just change the color to something new. Let's go for something a bit yellow. I'll do that. And then maybe something a little bit kind of red. There we go. And we've got those strokes down in the uh, in here now. So let's whoops, go back to my camera. Make sure I got that locked off. Just have a quick look at what we're seeing here. 
Um, so each individual stroke uh, got painted on. They all have this little kind of lip at the end. I'll show you what's how to control that. Um, and yeah, so there you go. By the way, these are rendering pretty much in real time in Karma. Um, so that's what you're seeing here. You might be able to hear my graphics card whirring away down below. Uh, that's all good. So let's just take a look at some of the controls here um, in the Stroke It tool. So I'm going to select this one here. That's the one I'm working in. And first thing I want to look at is the color controls. So if I change to this color tab here, uh, ignore this ramp for now. We'll get to that in a minute. What's actually happening here with the color currently is that it's being determined by first the color that was selected when I drew the curve. And then that's going through a color system that's kind of expanding that into um, a bigger range of colors. And it's doing that kind of automatically. So let's have a look at some of our colors up here. So you might notice this uh, orange stroke here, uh, kind of reddish orange one, um, isn't a pure color. And the reason for that is this color range setting here. So if I take that down to zero, down to zero, there we go. Uh, you'll notice that um, I'm not seeing those colors anymore, uh, just that red. And then as I gradually bring that up higher, you can see that it's bringing more diversity of color into the palette. Um, and that is basically just a, a kind of uh, an arbitrary system I created where it basically just adds additional layers of color um, from inside SOPs, inside a control in SOPs. So you can play with this if you find those controls um, and maybe uh, add your own sort of customization to this. Um, but for now, it's pretty much um, kind of runs automatically like this. I just take the color range even higher and you can see now we start to get some almost um, getting close to kind of complementary colors. Uh, when we get right to the top here, there you go. You can see a big, big range in there. Just go back to some of these other ones so you can see that. And they all pretty much do that the same. Each stroke has a slightly different kind of noise texture offset in there. So they don't look, um, two won't look identical, which is useful. Um, and then if I change this color range bias, uh, you'll see that it just basically the whole color shifts more and more away from the original stroke color, which can just give you a little bit of um, more room to experiment with there. Okay, so if I switch on this manual color, basically everything just gets taken over by um, this ramp here. Do that here. There we go. So once I've done that, you can see now basically this ramp is, is kind of in charge of all the color. So if I pop, for instance, you can see this white's quite strong. If I change that to something like a bright green, which is probably gonna look nasty, uh, you can see, there we go, that green appears there. So just to show you that basically you can control uh, the color yourself um, and get quite a big range of, um, of customized colors in there. You can put as many knots into that ramp as you want. I'm going to switch back to the automatic color system. There we go. And now we'll start to look at some of the actual brush controls in this. So let's have a look here. Anytime you see a ramp in the stroke it's set up, you um, should understand that as basically from the left side being the start of the stroke and the right side being the end of the stroke. So for instance, this width one, which is the very first one we come to, this is a control. If you want to manually set the width over the length of the stroke, you can. So for instance, if I wanted to just make them very thin uh, at the beginning, if I do that, you can see up here in uh, SOPS that's changing it. Um, it'll take out a minute to update. There we go in Karma. Um, and so you have that manual control. By the way, some of these things are controlling settings inside SOPS and some of them are setting changing settings inside COPS. So, um, some things you'll see instantly update inside your SOPS preview, and some will take longer to update back in Karma. Um, okay, so some other settings to look at here. Bristle intensity, um, this actually says bristle intensity normal, and this one says bristle intensity displacement. So these are driving the shader and determining how much of the kind of brush bristle texture we see. So if I zoom in quite close on here, I'll go down like that. you can start to see there is a, a very fine kind of bristle pattern on that. And if I intensify that um, with this uh, bristle intensity, actually normal, I'll change that to like 0.5, I'll 
should get quite a more pronounced bristle look here. Once that updates, there we go. You can see that bristle texture is quite a bit stronger. And that's useful if you're going to be, your camera's going to be further away and you feel like you really need to see them. Keep that quite high. I'll put that back to 0.1 for now. There we go. And then the other one is actual displacement. So if I wanted to really kind of push um, a more physical feel of, of bristles on this, let's see if I take this uh, bristle intensity displacement up to like 0.2. Um, and at this point, I actually need to change a, a setting, which is quite important. So if you watch carefully, I'm going to, with my hand in the viewport, press D, change this render settings primitive, this one here. Uh, sorry, I'm in the render tab. I change this render settings prim to viewport settings, and I'm going to turn on this IPR continuous dicing. And what that will do is um, force uh, Karma to re-import the geometry whenever a parameter changes. And if you're changing something that is in displacement, that means it needs to do that. So you can see now um, it's updated that displacement. I have a much kind of heavier um, bristle pattern in here that will show up uh, in more uh, so the more pronounced thing because it's actually changing the geometry at render time. Just a word on this uh, continuous IPR dicing. It does mean that, for instance, once I start moving my camera, I lose that kind of real-time camera control or camera update. I have to wait for the geometry to reload each time I do that. Um, so I'd suggest having this window open a lot and just being ready to turn this effect, this IPR dicing, off and on so that you can keep the whole system tactile. I'm going to take that uh, geometry intense bristle intensity displacement back down to like 0.05, just so that's um, not very strong. And that will update now because I've got the dicing turned on. There you can see now it's got subtle again. Um, and I'm going to turn the continuous dicing off while I just play with some of these other settings. Okay. I'm going to skip over this wobble control for a minute and go straight to this dry edge control and we'll come back to wobble in a second. Uh, so dry edge is basically simulating this kind of rough edge at the beginning of the strokes. You can run it at the end as well, um, but obviously then you, that will interfere with this kind of um, bit of um, uh, paint buildup at the front. So I tend to usually, usually use it like this. So first of all is this, um, this slider here. If I move that to the right, you'll see that these strokes all got a little bit shorter there because basically that's just trimming off that edge more. Yeah, now if I look at some of these other settings here, mainly this dry edge distort, it's at 0.1. If I take that up to 0.5, you'll see now I'll get a much kind of rougher uh, beginning of my stroke, which is quite cool. Um, see there, it can create a, a quite nice kind of um, sense of like a, a dry brush um, as it comes down onto the canvas. Um, crank that really high. Let's try it at one. Eventually these can become so high that um, they can actually start to kind of chew away at the actual beginning of the stroke um, or the end of the stroke, which you might not want. Also um, pay attention to this uh, dry edge complexity. If I take this down to something lower, um, you know, notice that I get, uh, basically it's a, it's a higher frequency in this noise. And that's quite good for basically simulating a lot more bristles in your stroke. So for instance, now if I took the uh, distort value actually to something quite low, what we'll get is um, quite a lot of kind of fine edges down here. And then if I you know, take this even lower, like uh, 0.02, basically what we'll get is the feeling that um, a very clean beginning of the stroke. Um, but still kind of one that feels a bit organic and not perfectly flat like that. I'm going to take the distort back up to 0.5. So I have a nice little bit of a rough edge there. Um, and I may take the complexity, um, actually make that a bit higher. Sometimes these values here can seem a little bit uh, counterintuitive. You just have to experiment with them to get them to do what you want to do. Basically that's the kind of the flat stroke stuff done. Of course, these other controls I'm going to look at here in a second can also be used to affect the flat stroke, but I think they're, they're a bit more effective when we use it on a, a kind of fat blobby stroke. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go back to the um, uh, Solaris and just change which of these bits of um, stroke geometry we're looking at. Just change this to one. And now we should see uh, quite blobby strokes. 
I'm going to turn on the continuous dicing so that we can see that some more. Um, and I'm also going to go back. Stroke it and change the color mode back to the color logic so we can see that there. Okay, cool. So I'm going to turn the dicing off again just so I can pan around with the camera a bit and show you a few things. Things to notice here are um, obviously this stroke is now kind of a lot less um, straight. It's kind of, I'm calling this wobbly. Um, and that's intentional. That's to kind of create the sense of a sort of erratic brush stroke. And the reason for that is that I've used um, a setting called wobble. So you'll see here under the bristle intensity, there's something called wobble amount and wobble frequency. And then there's this other ramp called wobble limit. Uh, so first off, just keep an eye in, in the uh, SOPS um, area. And if I take this down to like 0.01, You'll see now my strokes are, are pretty flat again. They're pretty straight. And you see that they updated here in Karma as well. Uh, now, I don't even remember where that was. Was it something like um, 0.15? Cool. Now that's probably way too strong. So let's try taking that down to like 0.05. There we go. So now we're kind of back to where we were before. And uh, the other setting here is just this frequency. Um, higher values will create a higher frequency noise that's distorting this. Um, so for instance, if you want something that still feels kind of wobbly, but not necessarily so erratic, you can take this down to like five. And then you can see you're still getting some of that kind of um, displacement occurring, um, but it isn't quite as intense. Now, um, you might notice obviously that this stuff is happening in SOPs. And again, I mentioned that some things occur in SOPs and some things happen in COPS, in the texture mapping. This one thing, this wobble is all basically displacement on the original geometry. And in order for that to work well, please make sure you've got this high res tick box turned on here. And you'll just notice if you look in that that has a, gives us a slightly higher density mesh here than the other one. Okay, so what's making this whole thing kind of stick up off the surface of the canvas? That is what I call blob. And um, I'll show you how that works now. Let's go down to the bottom here to blob. Okay. And um, you can play with this quite easily. Just remember that if you do tweak this, that it will need to, um, you will need to have continuous dicing on in Karma to see the difference. There's another setting in here, um, which is called a Bob Blob Depress Middle. Did I spell that blob? I need to fix that. Okay. So basically all this is doing, um, maybe a subtle thing is pushing down the distortion, this um, blob distortion in the middle of the geometry. Did it actually update? Uh, just in case you want to get more of a kind of, um, there you can see it now, it's kind of depressing what's happening right in the center, creating kind of a valley. There we go, you can really see it there in the middle of the stroke. I just noticed some references I was looking at that kind of felt like that, like the, the paint almost has been sort of pushed by your finger and it had that sort of depression in the center. So that's why I created uh, that control there. Uh, that's called blob depress middle. Have fun with, uh, with this tool. It's, um, it's really fun once you get kind of the hang of, of painting with it. In the next uh, tutorial, I'm gonna look a lot more at how this tool works uh, under the hood. And you can see kind of how COPS and SOPS work together to give you, uh, to create the system. And also if you want to sort of go in and mess around with it, break it, smash it, make it better, all those cool things. All right, thanks for listening and watching, and I will see you really soon.